Hi everybody, uh, I had to make sure the audio is on. This video is serving as a, uh, a teaching uh, opportunity uh, in the middle of uh, what seems like a bullish market. <clears throat> um, so remember that this data can change depending on what uh, what type of environment we're in, but luckily for cryptocurrencies we're in a bullish environment with uh, Bitcoin on the rise and expected to go up another between 5 and 10k possibly this weekend. That's my research opinion. Um, so altcoins latched on to Bitcoin on the last dip. They wanted to go up with Bitcoin. So they the correlation is very close, very tight. Um, so this is, uh, I, I promised one, I promised the Discord group that I would uh, show them how I uh, trade. Um, I day trade with this strategy and you can also use it to uh, trade long term. You can go back to the one day. You can go back to the four hour. Depends on what you're in. I'm doing the. Um, this is bands perpetual, so there's not much data. Um, but so we'll stick just for. Uh, just for. Um, to make this easy, we'll just stick with uh, the data we can see. So we'll zoom in, but you can use it on any time frame. Um, so one thing I noticed, and I, I changed my strategy over the past few weeks since I stopped working and I needed to be more efficient with my day trading. Um, I didn't always do this. I knew I knew all these rules, uh, but it wasn't until I was able to just focus on trading every day that I found these little secrets and started putting them into use. Um, so I'll try to explain it as, as best as I can. Since this is the first time I've really um, put it together for somebody else to see, it's hard to see what somebody else is seeing. Um, so I'm gonna. So usually, the first thing I do is I switch to Heikinashi candles. So you get uh, typically you get a trend. Each candle is uh, indicative of a trend continuation until it gets reversed. As you can see, there's a lot of green with a lot of red, um, and then once you see the one green, you can it's an indicator that okay maybe we have a reversal here depending on the time frame you go into obviously if you go into the five minute you're gonna you're, obviously you see that one 15 minute candle is three five minute candles you get more data um we'll stick with the 15 for now um so typically i switch to Heikinashi. i always switch to Heikinashi. sorry uh but for the sake of this video i'm going to switch back to regular candles so i can actually use the reverse and uh fast forward um uh, the replay bar so i want to go back to this area here and show you exactly what i'm seeing uh as it's happening let's get where's the uh, where is where is it Okay, I'm clicking on it. This thing is so finicky and irritating. Ugh. What the hell? God damn. I... Guess we're not doing that. Let's see. Candles. It's not an option for Heikinashi. So I guess we're not doing that anyways. I'll just explain it here and then I'll use another current chart uh, as a uh, um, as an example. So typically what happens is we get a breakout. So you'll want to search for a coin or stock. It doesn't matter that it's about to break out. Let's zoom out to the hour. So you want to look for this level here and look to that level there for a breakout. Once we get a breakout, so we have a, a bull flag forming under what would seem to be resistance. You got a lot of wicks to the top and rejections that shows that this is confluent with a, a possible breakout area. So once it breaks out, we get a retest of where we were and we break out again. If you zoom out, you'll see it. You'll have a better idea of, of uh, what's going on, but we don't have much data, so we don't want to zoom out too far. Uh, so you get the breakout retest. You always get a retest. Remember that for any new people. And then you get the real breakout. 
uh, typically I'll tell you some other rules and you can rewind this video and play it over and over again. That's how I've learned. I learned how to trade. Um, you take that length and you put it there typically and you get a little extra. Nowadays we get a little extra because we're in a very bullish environment. We get the wicks to the top. Some people trying to get, you know, probably algorithms and bots getting the actual little sense out the top, but typically you can measure out how far to go from there. Um, from a breakout area or sorry it depends on how you see it you put it at the line you put it out the, at the breakout area line so anyways we have our flag zoom back into 15 minutes um, uh, obviously you'll get a lot more consolidation areas into more breakouts let's just assume this is the flag we're looking at here First, you're going to get what's called you're going to get what's called a uh, a test dip. So you'll break out. You'll have a on the lower time frames. If you zoom in again, you'll see that this is it's harder. You'll see that this is a little flag and consolidation area. It breaks out again. Um, zooming out, if we want to uh, have less trades. You wait for this to consolidate and break out. And then once you start to see a red candle, that red candle is going to tell you we are going back to test this area, this triangle. Typically, and I would say 90% of the time, you get a direct bounce or you get a bounce, not necessarily direct. You get a bounce area. This serves as a bounce area. That's why I made the little triangle there. Every time you'll start to see a little consolidation flag and then a breakout. And then you'll come back and test it, successfully test it, and I would say 90, 95% of the time. I really, the way, when I trade, I really don't see, I really, I rarely see uh, a time where it'll test it and then, and not come back to, uh, not come back up. So you'll get a little test here. Um, typically you'll get, you'll go, you'll go no higher than this first area, but we're in a very bullish market. It went higher. Uh, that is a good sign actually. I'll tell you what I did as a trade as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then we come back. So we did the test dip. That's a reload opportunity because there are some stocks uh, that stocks and coins that are doing what's called the, uh, I call it the U-shaped breakout. It just does a U-shaped breakout continuation. Uh, we're, we typically don't do that in crypto, not too much. Um, maybe on the lower time frames. And then you'll come and get another liquidity dip. This is the liquidity zone. This becomes the liquidity zone for that second dip. Uh, if uh, most of the time, I'll say 90% of the time, we get a retest back up to this area. Um, first you want, and then you want to draw out the, Fib, uh, the Fibonacci area. And since we're on the 15 minute, we're day trading. You want to go to the top of the first structure over here as the top. Um, so, uh, I made the, if you see my, if you watch my, um, Fibonacci retracement extension video, it'll talk about the 0.382 and the 0.618, uh, Fibonacci levels. And you'll know the reason why I made them gold. They're the golden areas. Uh, 618 is the golden touch, uh, so to speak. Um, it's the bullish, uh, retest. Uh, and this one seems to have touched it right on the dot. So it's very, very bullish. Uh, you you, you don't typically get an exact touch on the 618, but we got an exact touch on the 618 here. Um, so we would get a bounce here, and then we get a retest of what looks like the 72 area. Or the 272 area, or sometimes, um, depending on which way you go, it's going to be the 786. It's either going to be 786 or the 272 whichever way uh the trend is going and whichever way you're gonna if you're talking about retracing or pulling back all the way back down which is why it's called fibonacci retracement uh this is the 100 percent area the one and this is uh zero percent retracement or you're gonna flip it around it's gonna be uh the, the numbers are gonna flip around uh, but here we're using the 618 for the bounce um we had another 272 touch perfectly, and now we're accumulating again. If you look at the MACD, it's going sideways. We're going to accumulate somewhere around here. 
um, another breakout and test of the top of this structure here. Um, that's called a lower high. You always want to be on the lookout for a lower high. Always. That is your assumption that there's going to be a lower high. So you could always sell on a lower high. You're going to, and you can even get these wick touches. Um, you want a lower high. We reaccumulated again. We're still going sideways on the MACD. Keep a close eye out on the stochastic RSI. That tells you whether we're uh, done, whether we're completing or restarting uh, a move up or down. And typically, once you hit the top here, you'll start to see a move. You'll start to see the uh, candle action moving downward. Um, so learn how to utilize stochastic RSI, uh, MACD, and RSI. Those will give you. Uh, those are lagging indicators telling you um, where candle and price action is going. Stochastic RSI t uh, is a lead indicator for RSI. Uh, FYI. Uh, so we're in a, this. We're considering this test dip, this liquidity dip area as the the reload zone. So we got people making sure they're getting their their touches in. They're making sure they're getting their trades in in this area. And because we're in a bullish, uh, it's pretty much been a bullish day, and we're in a bullish environment. Considering we're in alt season, um, this is going to be a bounce area. We bounced up. We got the lower high uh, compared to compare comparative to this. Uh, top structure here reaccumulation and now if we zoom in you're going to want to zoom in to get more data you don't want to assume based off the 15 that oh it looks like we're going down from here because if you take a closer look and i started utilizing these a lot more in this structure you get a descending trend line and from here we reaccumulated and you want to uh you, uh, if you look over to the volume profile, you see that this um, this purple line is saying that this is where a lot of the volume has happened at. And that is because uh, this is a critical area. If we break down and we come we come down from we come down from here, then we start retesting this area again. And the volume profile tells you where buyers and sellers are at the moment. And we would retest this, and then we could possibly come back up to retest the line. And most likely, you'd, hopefully, you'd want to accumulate here and break out here again um, on a descending trend line breakout. You want, um, you would like the action to go back to the top of the structure, and that happens according to the pattern site. It happens 68% of the time. It goes back to that area. Uh, but because we already broke out, we can now assume we're going back to this area. So the lower high is going to be invalidated. And uh, ideally, we're going to want to test these weak areas. You see the cascading volume. They're getting weaker. The, the, the more blue that comes in, the more buyers that are coming in. And as you can see, the higher we go up, the more buyers we have. Because they're getting prepared for a breakout. You have a lot of people who are breakout buyers and breakout traders. I like to be a breakout trader because it's very safe. As long as you know that we break upwards, we tend to break upwards, we break out, come on, all these little dots. We tend to, let's say we're going to break out here, who knows how high we'll go. We always retest it. We always retest support. If this support isn't very strong, like these wicks isn't, isn't very good support, then Ideally, we're going to go back up, and then we're going to find real support. And you can find it with the volume profile bars over here. We'll probably go somewhere over here, and then we'll go back through, and we'll break out on another uh, what we call another leg. And then, you can, uh, again, on a successful breakout, measure the length of the previous leg. Maybe take a little bit off. You come here. This is what I do. It just makes it easy. Put it to the top of the structure. And you can find out one. It's one way of figuring out where we're going to go. And we have the. Uh, I always go below the. Uh, actual resistance area. The 0786. 
seems to be a, a good area to take profit and it's around what it's exactly $20. That's not a coincidence. $20, $1, $5, any solid whole number serves as psychological resistance. So some rules you want to keep in mind is you always want to keep an eye on the stochastic. The stochastic is at the top here. We're probably done um, moving up at the moment. As you can see, uh, if you've been watching the price action, you rewind uh, rewind a, a minute or so. You see that we hit, what, 1684 or something like that, 1680s. Because we're at the top of the stochastic, price action is slowing down. We start to get these wicks, uh, this um, sell pressure wicks, people who are shorting algorithm bots who are shorting at these resistance areas based off stochastic, RSI, MACD, other indicators, maybe even Bollinger Band. Um, and we'll start to get pressure down. Uh, another thing to remember, even on the sent descending trend line, um, which is cascading volume downwards, we can get a retest of this structure and make sure it's actual support. And if we come to this area, usually support, you can assume that support is somewhere within this bowling action. This is like a cupping action here. You typically get support at the bodies of the candles, not, ne not necessarily at the wicks. Um, so you can probably assume, and if you, uh, if you look to the right, you see that we're supported uh, by a high buy volume, uh, volume profile candle. If we do come back down here, we'll probably bounce there and then come back up and really test the top of this this structure for a breakout. And then test the rest of this area up here, maybe even accumulate in this area before another breakout. Um, so some other rules you want to keep in mind is moving average lines act as support and resistance. And let's zoom in. Um, and I didn't even show you the moving averages. Let's add those back in for this part of the lesson. Um, another thing, I start, another uh, tip I started realizing was uh, price action. Yeah, it goes back to this area, um, but these moving average lines serve as the support. And so you can mark out. Uh, I use Alt H on Trading View. Uh, I don't know what it is on Max. Um, mark it out as support. You can even come here and do it before while this this little structure is is rising up. You can come back here and go to the body of the candle and mark it out and say, yeah, we're going to come here and we're going to get an initial bounce. Uh, the test dip bounce. Uh, but typically you get the moving average line. This is the 50 day moving average line. As you can see to the left, I use the 50, 100, 200. And then you want a fast EMA as well. I use 21. It's it's solid and it's fast as well. You. A lot of people use eight, like people use 13. It for the most part, it doesn't matter. Um, test out your, uh, your theories with it. See if it works, see if it, uh, actually helps. I use the 21 day, um, study moving average lines as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you draw these moving average lines out, then you'll see that the, the dip happens right on these lines. If we get a failed breakout above the previous structure here, on this move failed breakout from there, we come back down, we touch another EMA line. Um, another trick is you want to find the EMA line that you want to find the time frame that actually touches these MA lines pretty closely. This is close enough. Like you want to, uh, the 20, it didn't really touch the 21 day because the structure was there first. This structure was there to touch first the, uh, the horizontal line. Uh, but then the next dip we played around, we obviously we still hit the 618, but we played around with the 50 day. These wicks, they count as a touch. If it goes past it and comes back over and the bodies, the body of the candles and over the MA line, then that counts as a touch. So we came here, we accumulated here, but because we're in a bullish market, uh, we got some rise in action here and we are honoring, it seems like we're honoring that line right there. Um, now we're waiting on, uh, looks like we're waiting on a breakout here, uh, back to the top of here, but back to what we're talking about, you end up getting a moving average line, uh, moving average lines act as support 
before they move back up into the top of the previous structure it came from. So we got touch here. Or we got let's just say we got touch on the 21 day. We got the touch on the 50 day. If we were if this was just a normal break uh, breakdown chart, we get some we get a move back up to here, which lines up with this area. And then we come back down to here, touch the 100 day. And then now, as you can see, these previous structures are becoming resistance. But they're also, listen close, they're also areas that you can retest. Because they're retesting, you can play from, and you can see the confluence between the 618 Fibonacci and the 100 day moving average line. Um, you can see that you can retest and replay. Where's the arrow? I'll just use this one. You can play from here back to this resistance area. That's a guaranteed area to play uh, to day trade in. It's almost 40 cents that you can play within. And for if you're using leverage, that's a lot of... Uh, that's a, a very nice area to play in and you can play just that area and then wait to see uh, what happens if we break back through you might get lucky and, and um, it breaks back through to this next area of resistance you might be able to get another sell order there um, that's typically what happens um, and then continuing it along uh, let's say we hit resistance here we're going to come back down somewhere to the 786. This will rise up towards it, and you'll get confluence of these two, um, the Fibonacci level and the moving average line, and get another bounce. And then you start to come here because the volume profile is showing that we can come all the way down. You probably scoop up here, and then it's going to retest the lines, and that's where you get the stair stepping, and then hopefully you get a breakout somewhere there. Uh, you have to rewind this video to see, uh, to you know, double check this research, double check your research. Um, but that is what I see every day. I use the moving average lines and Fibonacci lines as as support and resistance, and I don't, I don't go against what I see. If I take what the market gives me. And that's, as a trader, that's what you have to do. You can't force it. You can't force your own. Uh, as traders, as humans, we force our own desires onto the market. And that's how we trade. But as long as you give yourself to the market, the market is going to give back to you. And this is how I've been tra day trading successfully. If you've been in my Discord group, you see the, um, the profit and loss um, uh, screenshots. Because that's what I do. I'm, I'm trading within these zones. And um, I hope that helps. I'm going to cut it short here. Um, or it looks like we're attempting to break out past this area. So if you were waiting for this to break out or break down, you're doing the right thing. You were in for a retest. You're doing the right thing. Ideally, you don't want to try to take a trade. You're taking an unnecessary risk trying to trade in here. Wait for it to do its thing. Yeah, you're going to miss out on a few cents. But you want to trade, uh, if it breaks out above here, you're going to want to trade this area. That's still very risky. Yes, it, it, you're missing out on a whole dollar from this point, but it's the safe bet to take. And we're in a bullish environment. Um, as long as Bitcoin doesn't ruin everything, and you can do the same thing with Bitcoin. Test dip, liquidity dip, and it looks like we got a bullish rise. Uh, but it looks like... I'll tell you this, I've studied a lot of patterns over and over and over and over again. It looks like that's what we're doing. So we'd come back down to 46K, and there's a lot of structure over here to support that theory. Um, Bitcoin can break down from here if it doesn't hold this. If Bitcoin comes back to here, it's definitely, if it comes back to here, it's, uh, I would bet that we're coming back down. Um, it could also be an inverted head and shoulders. Look that up on the, the Google that. Um, but it looks like it's trying to hold on. It bounced off the MA, the bottom MA. So we should get a retest back to 
this high volume area at 48k before another breakdown or it reconsolidates and breaks out again but it looks like band wants to come uh, uh, it wants to go back up. Band is very bullish right now. If we get a third test here, we'll probably consolidate for a, for a few bars and then break through. Um, at this point, if I'm feeling risky, I'll play it on a breakout from this area. If not, if not, then I'll the safest bet. The safe thing to do is to play this breakout play the retest or hold for the retest, add on the dip, come back up with it and let it go up another hole, another leg, which seems to be, you know, possibly two to three dollars on top of this back to props. I would say twenty dollars new all time high going into the weekend, going into a holiday weekend. Uh, altcoins and cryptocurrencies are going to be very bullish. So it'd probably be in my best interest to stay in this trade one way or another just keep adding to the dips as long as it doesn't go below here and then we come down here anyways so that's the video uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to hit me up twitter discord find my discord um, youtube doesn't matter uh, hit me up and i'll try to explain my concepts a little bit better to you hope that helps thanks